Hey G fans, Steve Blankert here. I uh, appreciate all your comments last night on my question about uh, if you'd like to see some videos on rebuilding a generator. So it looks like a lot of you wanted to see that. So um, so we'll we'll get started with that. So I want to show you this generator. This is the generator I was talking about. I've removed the cover band. This this covers the commutator end and the brushes. Um, so I can take a look inside and just see what kind of shape it was in. And it looks pretty good. Um, it looks like it hasn't it may not have may have never been rebuilt. It looks like it's pretty original, which is really nice. Uh, it kind of tells me Bubba hasn't had his fingers in it. So one thing I like to do before I get started is I like to do a motoring test on a generator just to see if it's electrically sound before we get started on doing a rebuild. Just to, that'll tell me if it's if it's electrically sound that that tells me the field coils are working that the armature is not shorted. Um, you know, so it's basically in, in good sound shape. So what I've done is wi I've wired it up for a motoring test. Now there are three terminals on a GDZ4817A generator. This is a, a CJ2A generator. This is the large one is, is marked A for armature. The smaller one is marked F for field coil. And then the one down here in the middle is a grounding screw. So what I've done is I've taken uh, a jumper wire and I've jumped from the field screw to the ground and the reason I did that is that grounds the field coil that lets the full amount of current through the field coil so, it'll, so it will motor well and if it was hooked up to a regulator and if it was running as a generator the, the regulator controls the field strength which is what controls the output of the generator so it would regulate how much current it allows through the field coils but in this case I'm jumping it straight to ground so it'll allow the full amount through so the jumper goes there, and then from the ground screw, I'm going over the negative terminal of the battery. And then from the armature, the positive side, I'm going to run a, I've got a jumper here, then I'm going to run over and touch over to the, to the positive terminal. So if it's, if it's electrically sound, it'll turn. Now it may be a little noisy, and it's because it's dry and, the, and such, but this will tell me if it's functionally, work, worth, work, functionally working. Sorry about that. So let's see what happens here, okay? Ah, look at that. She's spinning. A little noisy, but that's okay. You don't want to do that for a long time. Just a couple seconds just to see that it works. So that tells me that the, the, that the generator is basically functionally uh, electrically sound, uh, which is really good. That's a real good sign. So... Uh, so what we're going to be doing here is in, in the next uh, week is I'll start taking this apart. We'll take it all apart. We'll inspect all the parts. We'll look at the wiring, repair any wiring, um, look at the brushes. We'll just kind of go through everything and test, check everything on it and get it cleaned up, painted, and all put back together. Now, by the way, this is a, uh, I looked at the date code on this. This was made in December of 1949. So that, that tells me now my Jeep was, is, is, was made in kind of late 48. So this is a little bit, you know, a little bit newer than my Jeep, but uh, I, I'm debating on whether to get a new tag or, or just leave the original tag. If I get a new tag, then I might date code it back a little bit just so it matches my Jeep. But my Jeep is by no means a show Jeep. It's just a, it's just an old fun, fun beat up Jeep to have fun in. But uh, so we'll see. So anyway, that's where I'm at. Uh, that's where we're getting started with, and uh, we'll pick this up again in a couple of days. All right. If you guys got any questions along the way, feel free to post them, and I'll try to answer them as we go. All right. I'll talk to you all later. Bye.